as the Invisible Man attempts to reboot the Dark Universe again. <laughs> Let's look at the very first Dark Universe film, but not really, because it's also a reboot of The Mummy from 1932. We're talking about The Mummy, 1999. We came into this, we came into the room to record this, and I'm like, why are we doing this again? And I'm like, I assume it's because Universal Pictures, the owner of a bunch of pseudo-public domain monster movies from back in the day... That they've run into the ground. <laughs> they're attempting to do it again. Yes. They tried to do it with Dracula Untold. Untold. They tried to do it with The Mummy 2017. They tried to do it with The Mummy Tomb of the Emperor Dragon, which is the threequel to this. They tried it with The Wolfman. They tried it with Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> but I think this movie, though, is the reason they keep trying this because this yeah. was a huge movie. It's part Indiana Jones, yep. part Terminator, part Ray Harryhausen. Mm. All adventure, Mason! Well, here's the thing, because this thing we do is called Caravan of Garbage. And do people leave a like normally? They absolutely do on Caravan of Garbage. I thought so. Whether they enjoyed the video or not, they just do it, all right? <laughs> but maybe people are wondering why we're talking about The Mummy. Mm. And honestly, this is one of the all-time greats. Uh, yeah, like, I agree. In terms it's of, like, there. fun action movies, if you if this movie were never released, if this movie were put in a vault, mm. uh, a tomb, if you will, and it was released now, yeah. I think people would still enjoy it as an action movie. I agree. And I think there's only a couple of things that would let it down... Yep. This year, the visual effects have that sort of air of not quite there-ity, a lot of it's which is good, quite some common. Of it's yeah. like, but I think that was quite common in like yeah. the mid to late nineties. Uh, and speaking of Rachel Weisz's character, has a serious case of turn of the millennial eyebrows. I, like I was going to say the exact same thing. <laughs> they're practically non-existent. Yeah. She is very lucky they grew back. Oh, absolutely. I'm surprised she wasn't wearing like low-slung, like flared jeans <laughs> in that era. But anyway, this movie's very good. Yeah. It's, it's funny. Yes. Action packed. Action packed. Well, you mentioned. Mentioned Rachel Weiss. She's terrific. Apparently, she's the only one that was offered the role. John Hannah's great. Apparently, if we're talking Rick O'Connell, yeah, we are leading man. Mm -hmm. Brad Pitt was considered. Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Matthew McConaughey. It was offered to Stallone. Tom Cruise also had a look in, who ended up <laughs> being in a Bobby movie anyway. When he signed onto that one, he's like, "This is going to be exactly the same as the old one, right?" And they're like. <laughs> Yep. Uh, DiCaprio was also offered the part and he wanted to do it, but he was committed to the movie The Beach. I like that movie. I think it's I think it's underrated. But I think what they did do then was go, okay, can we get Brendan Fraser then and just give him Leonardo DiCaprio's Titanic hair? <laughs> sure, yeah. Brendan Fraser is excellent yeah. in this movie. Agreed. I think a few people have pulled off this Indiana Jones-esque adventurer. I think there's obviously Harrison Ford, mm -hmm. there's Brendan Fraser. And Nicolas I Cage in National Treasure, <laughs> and National Treasure 2, mm -hmm. and National Treasure 3, The Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. <laughs> I think Chris Pratt gets pretty close For in sure, Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. But I think it's one of those things where they keep trying to do it. It's a very fine line between smug prick mm -hmm. and confident and kind of a buffoon. And he yeah, manages right. to walk that line because he's not incredibly bright. Like there's a moment where he shoots the mummy with a shotgun and then later he's like, I got him, don't even worry about it. And they're like, no, he's undead. And he's like, no, no. No, I got him. I shot him. Don't worry about it. But this it. is also the 30s. Yeah, well, that's true. Pretty yeah. sure, you well, know. Well, mid-20s. But then there's moments where he's like, oh, he doesn't like cats. And then he, you know, he uses that to his advantage. So, you know, he's not a complete dummy. <laughs> he just takes a cat off his utility belt. <laughs> that's why I like this movie is because it's all the characters to one degree or another are terrible people. Yes, absolutely. But even like John Hanna's like a... He's a low-level scumbag. He should with, be in jail. With a, with, a, with a veneer of being a gentleman. Yeah, absolutely. And so there's an additional thrill of this movie of like, boy, I sure hope that they escape the, the clutches of the mummy. But at the same time, it'd be fine if they didn't. <laughs> I've just written this thought down, and I don't know why. Uh, is it <laughs> worth bringing up? I've written, I wonder what Imhotep would think of the movie Cats. Like, would it melt him? Is that a topical current reference? Is that no, why No, that's I a good in reference. There? Oh, well, I yeah. don't think he'd recognise any of the creatures on screen as a cat. <laughs> but, I mean, if you put him in that room, I think just the idea of a film would terrify him enough that he'd go on some sort of bloody rampage. Sure, so. yeah. You know how uh, Brendan Fraser is in the big Cairo prison, right? Yes. There's a moment when they enter it and there's just a dude on a big wooden rat wheel just running okay. he's not powering anything he's Are you just sure no i looked i rewound it he's just having a jog is it an exercise wheel yeah that's interesting i don't know i mean maybe was that a common thing just a big wooden rat wheel that you had to be on so you went to the you went to the effort of researching whether the big rat wheel was in fact in the movie and whether it's connected to anything. But mm. you didn't do any research into Egyptian prisons of the 20s to see <laughs> if, if that was a common exercise technique for the prisoners. Look, if somebody could do that research and talk yeah. about it below, I'd really appreciate it. Because we, now that I think about it, maybe it's something I should have looked into no, if no, I was no, going to no. bring it up. Oh, God, I hope we get an email from a guy and is like, I exclusively research <laughs> Egyptian prisons in the 20s. And I want to be clear, this is the most accurate representation I've ever seen on film. Apparently also he was hung for real in that scene 
had to be revived. Oh, that also happened excuse to Michael. Me? Yeah, that happened to Michael J. Fox in Back to the Future Three, where they just accidentally hanging people on set. Like I think it was a thing that just used to happen <laughs> sometimes. Because normally there's like a fake brace that they put them in, but yeah, I get. I don't know. Maybe you know what? Maybe that's actors' hubris. They're like, yeah. hey, uh, you'll be fine in this, right? And they're like. Yeah, yeah, sure, I'll be I'm fine. I'm a tough, tough yeah. guy. I worked on my abs, I worked on my neck. <laughs> That's right. Well, Brendan Fraser has even said more recently that these films kind of ruined his body doing these stunts. Like, he's got permanent injury, and by the third Mummy film, he was just held together by, like, tape and ice. And if you see him in that movie, like, he's in good shape. Yeah, right. But he's broken. Well, I mean, that's, yeah. you know, we're in that era where the whole deal with movies now is you just get a funny guy, you work him to the bone and give him abs. Yeah, that's right. And that's not sustainable. That's I, insanity, I right? agree, yeah. I say, having not worked on my abs at all. <laughs> I agree. That's the thread that I'm holding onto and not hanging myself with. I also enjoy the uh, the snivelly villain in this played by Kevin uh, J. O'Connor, Benny. I like the moment where he's like, hey, O'Connell, nice camel. And then you see later that he's also on a camel. So I don't know whether that's a mistake or not, but I just like the fact that he's just looking for anything to make fun of him about. Sure. And he's like, nice camel, slightly worse than my camel maybe. Well, again, if, if you'd done your research, you would know that there was some very, very subtle but important distinctions between the two camels. If we could get an email... <laughs> a from camel a, expert. A camel from expert from... 1926. Just, well, exactly. They have, you know, breeding has, has yeah. shortened their legs significantly. Ah. Their humps are on the bottom now, you know. <laughs> so. What? Quick question. Why would you give Imhotep, the high priest, mm -hmm. a super weird, super involved curse that means he can definitely come back from the dead and reap revenge, knowing that if he did return, he'd arise a walking disease, a plague upon all mankind, in addition to being an un holy flesh eater with the strength of the ages with the power over sands and the glory of invincibility why would you chance any of that is what I'm saying why wouldn't you just cut his throat and just put him in a bin <laughs> well first of all that does sound very appealing but second of all you get to do the prank the prank of you wrap you, you wrap the guy up yeah at like a mummy yeah and then you're like, hey, don't worry, we're gonna let, we're gonna get out of this. this I mean, we've funny, already cut pretty, your tongue off. Pretty bit. pretty funny. Yeah, this is pretty funny. And then you stick him in the sarcophagus and you fill it with flesh eating beetles. <laughs> How funny is that? I also they're not going to be around, are they? Because exactly. they don't have the undead curse. Yeah. Uh, so apparently there is an explanation behind those scarab beetles. You know that are they're quite quick and they're everywhere and they're flesh eating. Mm. Yeah. Apparently because they're in the coffin with him, they eat him and he eats them, and it's just this eternal kind of cyclical thing. It's not mentioned in the movie, but that is the explanation. And that's when one like crawls into his face. He just eats it like it's like a piece of popcorn. Okay, right. Because it's just like a snack to him after being <laughs> trapped for thousands of years. He's like, yeah, this is not a big deal, huh. mate. You mentioned the groundbreaking ILM special effects. There's things mm. like the giant sand face. It's yeah. a bit chonky, like mm. nowadays, but for the time, they, they sold it on that. They were for like, sure. check out this giant sand face. Mm. So I think it still holds up for the most part, but then there's moments where like Brendan Fraser has to fight a whole lot of Fraser. Is it Fraser? Like freight? It's not. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> but where he has to fight a whole lot of mummies, and he does this kind of balletic kind of sweep where the camera moves around him, and he's kicking them, and he's cutting them. Was this pre or post the Matrix? Because it's the same year. Same year. Oh, well, they they wouldn't have known. That, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But but if you look at the behind the scenes stuff, and it's pretty obvious when you look at it. None of those people or mummies are actually there and he's just swinging madly at nobody in the mm, behind the scenes yeah, footage. Yeah, it's yeah. quite funny, yeah. yeah. So the villain, played by Darkman 2's own... Uh, uh, Arnold Vosloo. That's right. Mm -hmm. So the villain in this, though, it's mentioned multiple times in the behind the scenes uh, by the director and others that, look, we don't just want some shuffly bandage, man. We want real cool CGI stuff happening. If you watch the behind the scenes, it's just them saying that again and again. People are so used to... Guys wrapped in bandages, you know, and that's what I, I wanted to get completely away from. I don't want this to be like a mummy movie like we've seen in the past with the shuffling guy in bandages. It's very 90s. It's a, a lot of CG work. It's not, it's not a guy wrapped in bandages. He couldn't be wrapped up in bandages. We knew that. Um, the creature... Yeah, like I said, he's not a guy wrapped in bandages. First of all, George Romero wanted to make this movie during the 90s and he was going to have a more horror-style version with a more horrific mummy. And because this is PG-13, they tried to walk that line between he's horrific and you can kind of see through him yeah, and right. some of his organs and some mm -hmm. of his skin and he slowly regenerates. But he's it's never like bloody or messy mm, in a way. It's more dusty. That, yeah, it's more dusty. It's more like kindling. Yeah. But I think overall, I think the effect works really well. And for a mostly entirely CGI component for a lot of this, I think that the detail in it still holds up. Except for the bit where he goes into the water at the end and goes, <laughs> it doesn't, look, doesn't look that good, does it? But I mean, they've never perfected that, have they? I think they have. I mean, they did it in the... Thumbs down to this movie then. Yeah, thumb, big, big old thumbs, big old down. thumbs down. Yeah. So you would not be surprised by this, but there's been a number of spin-offs and tie-ins and sequels and the like. Mm. And I'm going to 
to run you through some of them. You, of course, remember that we looked at the video game adaptation of this. Oh, my God. Here's a clip. <laughs> Look at the head on him. Wow. <laughs> Look at his head. Oh, man. <laughs> One of the worst things we've ever looked at. Would you? Is that inaccurate? Is that the one with a weird Rick O'Connell head? <laughs> yes. He's like a right. block and his head's been pasted on it. Yeah, okay. That's exactly what it yeah, is. Yeah, I remember yeah. that one. Yeah, that's awful. <laughs> Look at his flat face. Do you think they took a photo of his face and just pasted it on? <laughs> Not even. No. It Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> this is... This is Look, oh no. But also, there are a number of sequels. Stephen Summers, who directed this, Universal phoned him the morning after this movie was released and they're like, we need another one, which ended up being The Mummy Returns. Mm -hmm. There's also the spin-off The Scorpion King and then the spin-offs from The Scorpion, Scorpion King that aren't starring The Rock. There's the third one, obviously. Uh, there's the animated series. Big squeeze Me. Big squeeze Me, Never yes. Never even heard of that. That's right. Uh, the Mummy 2017 might also be in the same universe because one Mummies. of the- Mummies. Because Mummies, obviously. Uh -huh. But also the book- is in that. Oh, the beautiful golden book. The beautiful golden book. Or the other book. One of the books <laughs> is in it. I'm not watching The Mummy again, all right, am I? Uh, and also, Brendan Fraser also turns up in G.I. Joe, which was also directed by Stephen Summers. Oh, okay. And he's mentioned kind of, look, loosely in canon, let's just say that he's a descendant of Rick O'Connell. And he does say, look, I know you're fighting cobras, mm. but watch out for The Mummy. <laughs> 1999. <laughs> That's what he says. Yeah, exactly. So I just think it's really interesting that this universe, it's spun off so much just from this one blockbuster that just really took off and has never quite been replicated. Yeah. I don't mind The Mummy Returns. I wouldn't mind coming back and looking at it for this. Let us know if you want us to. But Boy, there's some ropey Scorpion King oh CGI in that goodness, movie, let me tell you. Boy, is there ever. But I think a lot of the elements from that movie are just directly kind of brought back. They're like, oh, Imhotep's back and he's... Instead of a big sand face, is a water face, etc. And so yeah, forth. Oh, you know sure, I mean? yeah, it's yeah. all of that. And I like the idea behind the third one that they're going to China and it's the Terracotta Warriors and it's a whole different kind of law behind it. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 syndrome. Exactly. As in it's not a good movie regardless of But we're the going Asia. to Asia, yeah. Yeah, but we're going to Asia. Look, all in all, I think, look, it's definitely of its time, mm. but it is that kind of gem that mostly holds up. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Like we said, there's elements of it that, you know, it's clearly dated because it's a 20 year plus <laughs> old movie at this But again, point. it's a movie about an Egyptian mummy coming back to life and kill a scarab beetles. Yes. If you can hold on to that suspension of disbelief for that, mm. you can probably hold on to it for some of the CGI doesn't look so great. Yeah, exactly. Because that's not what I feel is driving the movie. I think it's what got people into theatres, but it's not what makes it still interesting. Because otherwise people would be talking about Wild Wild West because that had CGI too, didn't it? No one remembers. <laughs> Giant metal spider! Bam, 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 ba -dam. <laughs> Yeah, I we'll probably never cover that for this because they're never doing another one of those, are we? Are they? Wild Wild West. I mean, movie. never say never. Never say never. I guess you're probably right. That's right. I'm curious though, and I'm throwing this out to you specifically. Would you like to see a sequel to this? Returning Ooh. cast members. Yes. Bearing in mind, Rachel Weiss didn't come back for the third one. Oh. She's would... doing Marvel movies now, you know. Oh, she'd <laughs> definitely come back. Yeah. But do you think it would play now? Do you think everybody's too old? Do you think she's willing to pluck her eyebrows to the mm, same level? I don't level? think she would, definitely not. I don't think yeah, so. I don't yeah. even think she did it for the second one. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, would you, would you see a sequel, though? Absolutely, I would. But do you think it would work? I don't know. Because I don't think it would. No, see, that's the thing. I think it would be very much Indiana Jones 4 kind of syndrome. I mean, I would very much like to, just on the back of the movie, the, the one movie, but given the huge number of spin-offs you've mentioned, all of which are bad. Yes. Then I don't hold out much hope for it. People but hey, see anything it. could be good. Anything could be good. And do people want to see it? I, you know, you never know, do you? Something That's so be true. Good. But generally, things yeah. aren't good, are they? I'll watch a thing with Brendan Fraser in it. Me too. Mm -hmm. Anyways, it's been Caravan of Garbage. We do this every week. If you do have a suggestion, please hit us up. Uh, I know we did a poll on Patreon to see what other dark universe movies do people want us to look at. It seems we've got a definitive answer on that. I'm not happy about it, but that's got okay. no one's coming up. But in regards to what's coming next week, here's oh, yes. a hint. It is time we became brothers. Anyway, subscribe if you want for any of that, because there are videos here every Sunday, Tuesday and Thursday. And of course, we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows that comes out every Monday. And that's all the things that I have to say. Incredible. You've done it again. I think I have, haven't I? <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Yeah.